Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm Nick, and if you were thinking about buying a Gretsch and you just kind of wanted to know what to expect because they are a little bit unique and whatnot, uh, I'm not a Gretsch expert by any stretch of the imagination. However, I do happen to own one, a G5120, and it's newly manufactured. This one was made in Korea, and it's really quite well made. Uh, but it does have idiosyncrasies, nothing that can't be overcome and every guitar has its glitches so I don't really consider that a negative or anything well, but there are things that if you know about ahead of time you can kind of know what to do when they pop up then you're golden right well I'm gonna play just a little bit let you hear it through the box and I might talk about that just a little bit just so you kind of know what we're playing through and I'm gonna play right now and then I'll talk to you some more okay now I'm just clicking on the compressor pedal otherwise it sounds like crap in the camera kind of cleans things up a little bit. Some of them are, 
and they will rattle and buzz when you play. It kind of sounds like string buzz at first, and you're like, well, what the heck is it? I took my pick guard off. I thought, well, maybe that thing is rubbing somewhere and or vibrating, but um, it sure enough, it's the these little saddles were vibrating in there, just giving a buzz. And I looked on the internet, and one guy came up with a fix that seemed pretty smart. He took the screws out and put little springs in there from clicker pens. Just would you know, clip the spring in half or whatever, and put it in there and put some tension on the saddle. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. I chose to do it the more expedient <laughs> method, which I don't suggest you do, but I just took some wooden shims and jammed them in there, so I'm going to have a great time the next time I go to intonate this guitar, because I'll have to dig those out of there. However, it, it works for me for now, and I, I'm not really too concerned about it, but that's something you'll probably may have to deal with if you are looking into getting one. And last but not least, the Bigsby. Uh, it's not designed to be a dive bomb whammy. Uh, it's not a locking nut scenario or anything like that. So if you use it conservatively uh, once your strings are broken in, uh, it does a pretty good job of staying in tune for the most part. Uh, it can be a little bit temperamental, but most of your tuning issues there are going to be at the nut. And you just got to make sure to use some kind of lube in there, like uh, pencil graphite works really good, but if you don't want to dirty up your nut, people have used chapstick also. And if you're still having problems, then you can take some fine grit sandpaper, like 100 grit, uh, 120 grit, fold it in half, and then just kind of gently slide it in there, just enough to, you don't want to overdo it, and you don't want to go deep, because you don't want to lower the strings, but just along the sides without rounding them off or anything like that. Uh, just give it a few passes, you know, don't don't go crazy. 100 grit, and then do it a couple times with like 120 grit or something like that. And that seems to help quite a bit. And that's actually not particular to a, a Gretsch. Any and every guitar, pretty much, that's going to be an issue. If your strings stick in the nut, you're going to have tuning issues. Other than that, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool sounding guitar. It's great looking, and it plays really well. So... I got no complaints overall. I don't know what that was. All right, the amp, it's an economy Vox. It's a Pathfinder 15. Uh, this particular model does not have any reverb. Uh, the 15R does. This one does not. It does have tremolo effect. Other than that, it's very basic. I mean, you got your treble and bass, uh, tremolo speed, tremolo depth. You got a volume knob, and you've got a gain knob with a little bit of a, a boost button there. Uh, it does not come with a pedal, or at least mine didn't. However, I did buy it used, so maybe they do, but I, I kind of doubt it. Uh, my suggestion there is, uh, if you pick up a pedal for it, be sure that you get a double pedal with two, two switches on it. Because I, I tried a single in it, and it only operates the gain, and it does not do the vibrato effect, the tremolo. And if I was going to have it just do one or the other, I would definitely want to have just do the uh, tremolo. But this one does not, you need a double. And that costs about 25 bucks, or that's what it costs for me. I bought it at Music Around where I got the amp. Uh, this one I picked up, it was used for 80 bucks. So I think brand new, they're probably only, you know, 120, 130 bucks, if that. But it's a, it's a pretty good sounding amp. It's 15 watts. It's very basic, very old school. And that's what's kind of cool about it. Um, it gets that old school kind of distortion, that natural breakup. Back in the day, in the big band era and whatnot, before rock and roll, they would uh, crank up the amp really loud to try to keep up with the rest of the band, you know, big old horn sections and whatnot, and it would start to break up and distort, and they really, they didn't care for that at the time. But, uh, of course, in the 50s, the kids found out that, hey, we can use that, and here we are today, lots of distortion. But this is that old school type of distortion. I mean, nowadays you got a Marshall or anything like that, and they sound great. Uh, it's really very versatile and refined, and that's all well and good, but this has its own unique old-school kind of distortion. Uh, the clean sounds pretty good, too. Um, I guess I can run through something like that real quick.
like to play it. I prefer the distortion. <laughs> Never been much of a clean guy, but it, it has it if you want it. Uh, that's really about all I have for you. I uh, hope you got some kind of useful information out of that. And um, have a good day, all right?